LeBron, I'm going to jump ahead here, and I'm sure everyone else has more questions about tonight, but I think we're not going to talk to you before uh, Thursday. Being a student of the game and looking at the collection of talent that the Brooklyn Nets have, is there a team that you can compare to in league history having that much offensive firepower on the same group? Um, have we forgot about KD, Steph, and Clay already? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> there, you, there you go. There you go right there. Uh, is there any excitement uh, about facing a, a new challenge like that up to your different confidence? You guys only were playing twice a year, if, if not in the postseason. Um, well, it's always exciting for me to go against, uh, you know, some of the best guys in the game, and they got three of them. They got three of the best guys in the game. Um, you know, definitely love to, to be full when you're playing against a team like that and see, you know, like at that point in the season where you match up, how you match up against some of the best teams in the league. And uh, obviously we're, we won't, we won't be full on, on Thursday. So, um, but other than that, yeah, I'm, I, I love going out there and just, you know, be down on the floor with some of the best that play this game. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, LeBron, after you guys got the, the word of what the, MRI on KD has shown. Did you feel like? I mean, did you did you say anything to the team, or did you um, feel a need to to talk to the team about what you guys would need to do to get through this, and and then what might that message be? Uh, it's just next man up. Um, it's next man up, and we're not expecting not one person. We're not expecting one person to try to pick up AD's, uh, you know, productivity. You know, it's nobody's going to be able to do that. He just brings too much to the table. But we all can do more. We all can collectively do more, and, uh, and and that's our job. That's our job to come out and do more, and we've seen that tonight. You know, uh, you know the, the four guys that we brought in in the offseason, they all did more tonight. You know, DS, uh, Trez, uh, Wes, and Mark, you know, picked up their play, and uh, we needed that from every last one of them tonight. So we, we're going to need that while AD's out. Hi. Hey, LeBron, thanks for taking the time. Um, I, I also have a next question if you're willing to entertain it. But um, – you guys uh, beat the Rockets uh, very convincingly last year's playoffs. You you, you played uh, the Rockets in, in James' last game there. Do you, do you feel like you know what the Lakers have done last year and, and what you guys have started to do this year is sort of directed that that response where James is now in, in Brooklyn? Nah, I don't think it has uh, much to do with us. I think it has everything to do with how James was feeling. Um, you know, James felt like he wanted to be in a different position, a different situation. Uh, he wants to win. He wants to win now. And he felt like his time was over in Houston. And that was all it's about. BP. Huh? What's going on, B? Okay, Garrett. Frank talked about telling you guys you have to embrace this moment. With EDV and all forever, knowing that it is. What does that mean to you? And how do you embrace that? Oh, he's going to be around. He just won't be on the floor, um, you know, as far as game minutes. But he's going to be around. And, um, you know, I've had, you know, big time guys go down in my in my career. Um, I mean, I had Chris Bosh go down in the first round of a playoff series, um, you know, and uh, and it took a while for him to come back. Um, so, um, you know, I've had guys go down. I've had, you know, Kyrie go down with a kneecap injury. Kevin Love go down with a shoulder, uh, torn shoulder. Uh, D-Wade went down before. So. You know, I've had some big guns, you know, before go down and, um, you know, you just have to rally around them, uh, keep them upbeat, but also the guys that's going to be in a uniform in the lineup, they, you know, just need to step up their play. So um, it's, it's, it's something that, um, you know, I don't want to say I'm accustomed to because uh, you don't never want to be accustomed to a player going down or a player having injuries, but, you know, I've been there before. <clears throat> Hey, LeBron. Uh, I, I'm sure, well, actually, I know you spoke about it. Um, what, what Draymond said last night about kind of the narratives that can surround a player who uh, wants a trade versus an organization who decides they're going to protect an asset by not playing it. Um, and kind of the differences between those two things. I'm curious, like, what's the, what's the solution in, in, in something like in a situation like this? Is it just better understanding from the public or? I mean, what, what, how do we get to a more equitable place between ownership and players when it comes to narratives? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't want to get into it right now. Um, I mean, I have so many thoughts about it, but I want to be very strategic on, you know, how my word is, is, is said. So I don't want to really jump into it much right now, but it's, it's the narrative of what the league has always been. And, um, 
Um, you know, from, from a team's perspective, they've controlled the narrative. Um, they've controlled the narrative of how players should, should be, how they should act, how they should, uh, you, know, you know, treat their organizations. And if things don't go their way, um, they have a, a, a way of getting out the narrative that this person or that person is a, a bad fit or, or was a, a cancer to the team or whatever the case may be. So um, they've always controlled that narrative. And uh, I think Draymond and uh, a lot of us, we understand um, that we, we, we would love to have change. We want change. We not even want change. We just want people to understand that it's two sides of the coin. It's not just one sided. Um, you know, so, you know, that's what I mean. Dre said it. I don't, I'm not going to piggyback anything that he said because he said it so perfectly and so engaging and it was so, you know, so, um, so smart about everything that he said. And I, and, and I'm right with him. I mean, that's, that is the way of the land. I mean, that's how it's always been. And, uh, you know, uh, we want to be able just to, uh, you know, you know, have an opportunity to uh, create and, 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 and also be able to, to control our own destiny at times as well. So <clears throat> that's what it boils down to. But it's, it's, it's so much more to it. Uh, how do we change it? I mean, it's all about communication. Um, it's all about, um, you know, being respectful, um, you know, being a, you know, a great teammate. Um, because at the end of the day, your teammates will speak for you. You know, organizations will, will will try to throw you under the bus. And we've seen it over a course of time throughout a lot of athletes. They will try to throw you under the bus. But, you know, in the long run, if you talk to a lot of the former teammates, a lot of the guys that's played the game and you talk to those guys, they'd be like, man, he's a hell of a guy. Uh, we loved him in the locker room. He was he was great. And, you know, so um, I think you just talk to former teammates and they'll tell you about him. And last two, Rachel. LeBron, I was listening to you list off. Chris Bosh, Kyrie, Kevin, now AD's out for a stretch. How is the 36-year-old the most durable guy in the room? Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's, uh, you know, about that. I mean, obviously, there's been some freak injuries. You know, CB went down, uh, Torres growing, um, you know, in that first-round playoff series uh, back in 12, I believe. Uh, you know, Kyrie had a freak injury where he uh, fractured his kneecap in the finals. Um, you know, we saw that. Um, Kevin had a freak injury uh, where Kelly only uh, they got tied up and, uh, you know, Kelly was a little bit too aggressive and, and was able to pull his shoulder out of place um, <clears throat> that we didn't quite like. Um, but, um, you know, and obviously d -Wade, you know, you know, he, he played through injuries a lot as well, but he had some flare ups with his knee um, as well. So, um, you know, for me, I just always just try to, you know, you know, uh, I don't know, try to keep my body in the best possible shape as possible if I've ever had an injury. Um, maybe it's not had me out as long. Um, obviously, I had the groin injury a couple of years ago, um, but other than that, I just try to always be proactive. Um, you know, be you know be available to my teammates. But you know, these guys do they do uh, so much behind uh, the scenes as well. You know, to to keep their body in in into great shape as well. And uh, they just had some freak injuries, and uh, um, you know, and, you know they're gonna do whatever it takes to get back on the floor. As every last one of my teammates have done, they've all worked their ass off to get back on the floor. And uh, I expect the same out of AD. Thank you. Last question. Hey, LeBron. Um, you've always been a person of history, and Spencer Haywood has been a person that you've uh, spoken with and really tried to bring to the forefront. Why is this, his legacy so important, especially trying to get uh, the naming of a, a rule change? Um, I just think uh, it's, it's very important to highlight and acknowledge um, people who've laid down the groundwork for us to be in the position that we are today. And, uh, and I think Spencer Haywood is one of those guys, along with uh, Kareem, um, along with, um, you know, the big O, um, along with um, Bill Russell, along with, uh, you know, so many others that, that played in that era um, <clears throat> that, that just laid a lot of the groundwork, both on the floor and also off the floor as well, um, in order for me to sit here and play the game that I love to play. Um, you know, so as much as I fell in love with guys that played the game, I also fell in love with the stories that was behind the game um, you know, some of the, the hardships they had to go through in order to be in the positions they were. So um, he's one of those guys. And uh, it's just all about, you know, respecting the, the journey, respecting the people that came before you. Um, and uh, and that's, I've always been that way, though. That's just who I am.